So there will be a lot of selling here. So I think long term, uh, given this move here, we could be looking at, you know, late 2025. Uh, I mm -hmm. think we, we could close this gap up here if we get the right momentum. So that's the, uh, the let's call it midterm, the midterm uh, target here at around 100, if we can yeah. get to, to, to that level. <laughs>Casper, go ahead and give us a background in, into who you are and what got you into technical analysis and trading and investing. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm uh, an educated engineer. I've been educated for like 10 years. And in around 2018, more or less, 2017, 18, I started to to discover this technical charting. And I found it very interesting because, you know, it's it's basically just data where you try to connect the dots Um and uh, and yeah, ever since I've just been been learning, I guess, still learning. And um, and at some point, uh, the goal is to to do this for for a living or or to have a a, a second income with uh, uh, from this. So that's uh, that's how I um, what my aim is to do. And uh, on a personal level, I have a wife, four kids. Yes, I said four. It's not a it's not a, a mistake. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff to do, working family charting so uh, i'm always tired more or less but uh, i enjoy it so uh, and these interviews uh, and, and youtube i have uh, i have started to do recently so that's uh, another caveat to to this whole process and uh, i enjoy it i really do so again thanks for being on and uh, hope i can contribute with uh, some good views wow. and uh, knowledge for your viewers i yeah, I mean, I didn't know you had that many balls up in the air. So, you know, you've, you've been killing it on your, your your YouTube channel. So, you know, very good. I'll have the link in the description box below. Thank you. Um, so what are, what are some of the factors that you look at in technical analysis to determine whether or not to buy or sell a stock? And feel free to open up any stock, uh, any charts you want to, to make an example um, out of it. Yeah, sure. I can, if I just, on top of my head, I will see if I can. Let's do my favorite sector, actually, uranium. I know you like uranium too very much. Mm -hmm. You cover that a lot on uh, on your channel. So, so basically, I am I, I'm more of a longer term investor, but my plan is to be more short term trading uh, when I get the capital to do it. So, um, so what I'm looking at most of the time is is uh, is is big breakouts, basically, and often when when no one is talking about it. Um, which was what I did for uranium, where I bought late 2020. I know, yes, people did talk about uranium, but at that point there were no, no, no hype, no anything going to the sector, and uh, the breakout was just—it uh, was an amazing setup for me, and that's why I bought. You know, so good setup, not a not a lot of uh, coverage, and uh, and the fundamentals for sector, as you also cover a lot on your channel, is just absolutely amazing for the next 10 years. So, uh, so yeah, but mostly it's it's technicals uh, that I do. Fundamentals will will come later, but but, but technicals is uh, what I'm looking at. So right. yes, and, and why why are technicals so important? I think the best way to say is that you know fundamentals tells you what to buy, and but mm -hmm. technicals show you when to buy. Right. So so you you get the timing better. Of course, you cannot nail it to to the, down to the to the to the to the final digit, but you'll have a way better entry compared to many other people. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. Did you did you come up with that term on your own? Because that's that's actually a pretty good way to think about it. I would love to take credit for that. I have heard it somewhere, but I cannot uh, remember who. Uh, but I've heard it somewhere. But uh, but uh, but yeah, but that's that's how I see it. You know, that's what technical does for me. Well, so, I mean, you meant you mentioned uranium. Do you want to just take us through some of the stuff you're seeing in uranium? Yeah, sure. I can easily okay. easily do that. Uh, and also, so this is a roughly 10 year long chart for URA. And just to give some, some history, uh, this was the peak just before Fukushima hit. And mm -hmm. ever since that, you know, we had a very long, long bear market 
a big stage four decline as you as you uh, which is the correct term to use for technical analysis and then we started to base out here mm -hmm. from 15 and onwards and um, let me just do it better here just we have a long bear market and then we have a, a basing pattern a basing here and now we are into a, an uptrend here in my view and and yep. the way that i got into um um uranium was actually we had this huge capitulation move down here so i knew this often when you get the hockey stick to the upside or the downside that's typically where you see the bottom for a major move so i would uh, my plan was to buy more or less the first pullback, which was late 2020, which was what I did. And ever since, I have been holding on to 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 that position, and I haven't sold anything. And now we are in the stage two, which is the uptrend of of this cycle. And uh, in my view, we have just we have completed the wave one, which is coming up here. Mm -hmm. And then we the wave two, which is the correction. I think we have completed now, and I think. With a bit of luck, well, not luck, but if you can get above a certain level, in my view, this is the 24 for URA, that should kickstart the next the next level up here. So if we zoom in, we have what I call my golden golden trend line coming down here, which we broke out last week. Yep. Everyone was excited, me too. Um, but I also mentioned to, uh, excuse me, on, on Twitter and also in my on my YouTube that I, I really want to see the 24 being broken before we can celebrate anything. So in my view, we have these highs here all the way across and then a bit lower here below 24. So when we can break that, I think that's when we get onto the races um, to the upside. And also shorter term technical, see we have the breakout, you know, uh, the, the, the breakout high retest and hopefully we will see the resumption um, in the next two, uh, two weeks or so if we can get some momentum going here. Um, there's all there's also a bearish take, which I know some people are looking at, which is that we have uh, a big head and shoulders coming across here, right? And the the green leg line here. So if this is a fake out, which it, it it could be, obviously anything can happen in the markets. If this is a fake out, and we slide back below here again, we really don't want to take out this this green trend line coming, uh, this green neck line coming here at around 18, because then we will get a big flush. And also, that would actually also make us the the third low. We have the the number one, low one here, low two. And often, what you see in any correction is the EV waves, where you have three lows or three highs uh, in order to complete the move. So if we do this, then we will actually have could go as low as 15 on the URA, which would suck big time in, in the short term, obviously. But but if you were to see that, in my view, this is a massive buying opportunity that you sh that that I will be taking advantage of uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, what, that's the bearish. Yeah. No, sorry. But what about the upside? Where do you, if we do break out, if we do confirm yes. this breakout, where do you think the potential lies to the upside near and long term? Yeah, I think as mentioned just before, uh, just at the start here, this is the Fukushima gap, as I, as I called, mm -hmm. you know, it blew up and then we had a big gap down. Uh, often when you see these big gaps here, this is always, in the state, in in when we turn around and come back up again at some point, this is always a magnet for a lot of uh, traders and long-term investors again. Also, to, uh, bear in mind, you know, a lot of retail people or just investors in general, right here, uh, if they haven't sold already, they're still underwater heavily. So when we get close to these levels, they will start to 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 go into. Uh, they will be. Uh, um, uh, back to zero again, basically. So they finally can get out of their investment. So there will be a lot of selling here. So I think long term, uh, given this move here, we could be looking at you know late 2025. 20, uh, I mm -hmm. think we we could close this gap up here if we get the right momentum. So that's the uh, the let's call it midterm, the midterm uh, target here at around 100. If we can now, get to, to that level. so Right. So URA stretches all the way out to 2011, but we we know that the peak in uranium was around 2007, 2008, but that wasn't captured by URA. I think the no, price of... What was that? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, and I believe the price of uranium back in 2011 was what? Like $80, $85, something along those lines? Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, could we potentially see any an even bigger upside move if we just kind of 
juxtapose that same analysis to the 2007 highs yes. as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and that's where I use a lot of ratios to look at. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's very important to, to both to get an entry, but also to get an exit of when you want to close your position. Mm -hmm. And we can look at, uh, in this case, we can take a look at URA divided by the spot price for uranium. So this is basically, you know, just uh, instead of measuring URA against the dollar, we are looking at against the, the metals price that we are seeing. Um, again, here we have the Fukushima crash. And mm -hmm. ever since we have been making a, a 10 year long, in my view, what's what will become an inverted head and shoulders right here, all the way across. So. If if my take and analysis is correct here on uranium, uh, for the next before this decade is over, I think we will reach a target that is. Let me have a look here. If we measure the from the head here, and we then we take the next level up here again, it matches very well with the Fukushima gap. And if that were to happen, the URA from where we are today will outperform. The uh, the spot price by uh, let's let's round it up by a factor of four. And just remember, in the meantime, the uranium price, in my view, will not be standing at sixty dollars where we are right now, or fifty five um, in that range. It will be in the triple digits as well. So you can actually let, let's say it goes to a hundred, then you can you can uh, uh, these uh, this four x right here you can uh, uh, multiply by two. So that should make uranium right. the URA go up by a factor of eight before we are over. Um, wow. So, and if, if, if the spot price goes to 200, then you can multiply this by four, so you have a 16x. Um, so that's one way to take it. So, uh, so yeah, there's a, a huge leverage in, in the uranium miners compared to, to the spot price. There really is. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is why, you know, I, I put a lot of focus on my channel on uranium. Um, I'm invested across the board, across the resource sector. But I, I really get excited over uranium just because of exactly what you described, just because okay. of how extremely undervalued yet necessary and critical for civilization to continue yeah, surviving at yeah, the same time. And these charts are just showing you just how undervalued it is um, yes. compared to previous highs. So you've got the URA divided by UX one, uh, which is spot uranium price. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, where, where were we in 20, September of 2021? I think that was the last high or was it March? Of 2022 I think yeah just yeah i think that just to show you guys this was actually where uh, late 2020 you know where yep. the uranium bull market started so basically mm -hmm. right now you can actually buy the miners at the same evalu evaluation compared to the spot price as back then yep. so you have a second chance here in my view um to get in very cheaply uh when measured against the spot price itself so yeah but this was the uh this was the high in uh in the ura right so it's actually a lower high compared to where we were, but still, that's that's the high. So when it comes time to sell, what are some of the the signs and indicators you'd look at to say, okay, this trade's gotten a little too expensive. Um, it's time to start trimming or start or start to time to start dumping. Yeah, I mean, stocks. typically, typically when you see a a chart that is very very stretched. Um, so if we were, for example, to flip this one, that's actually could be a good example here. So if we if we were to say that this is the this is the bull market right and mm. and and right here at the end you can see the big hockey stick where everything just goes vertical, that's when you should be starting to see if 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 it makes sense to to exit or to scale out, uh, or to trim to your position just to reduce the uh, the risk that you have. So uh, again, when you get really stretched and everyone again when everyone is talking about uranium going to the moon and you have already, uh, you know, went up so far, I mean that's when you should be starting to to uh, to look for the exit, right? Um, similar to what we saw back in the first leg up, you know. Uh, uh, sorry, when everyone was looking at. Uh, let me just show you on the URA chart here somewhere. Let me find it for you. Again, if you remember, right, this is the uh, this is where the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust came in. Everyone was talking uranium, and actually, the squeeze right here was the exit for you guys because everyone was talking uranium at that point yep um, so yeah that's typically when you need to look for the exit gotcha and you and you can see it too in the volume i mean the volume just at the very bottom of this it just spikes all the way up yeah it does yeah, really yeah i mean compared it. to like a few months ago relative yeah. to that point 
Now, uh, what other ratios do you look at when evaluating the uranium price? You've, I know you've got you've, you've looked at uh, URA, you've looked at URA compared to the metal. But is there anything else that you think is worthwhile to to look at when comparing when evaluating the valuation of uranium? Yeah, I mean the URA divided by the spot price that we just looked at is my main my main go to ratio for uranium. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the most important. But I, I I do skim through you know five to to ten uh, on the weekly basis just to look where are we against the Nasdaq SP five hundred overall commodities gold and so on just to see if there's anything that indicates that we are breaking down against for example the Nasdaq which we did you know like uh, I can't remember exactly but but some time ago yeah in March twenty twenty we broke down against the Nasdaq that's also why you can see you know the Nasdaq has performed very well the past what is it two two three months or so has performed very well. Uh, so I do. So I, I look at that to see where, uh, uh, if we lose momentum or gain momentum against other sectors, just to confirm other stuff. So it's uh, just to get uh, more puzzles to the uh, pieces to the puzzle, basically. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, anything else you want to show us in regards to the uranium sector before we pivot over to oil? Yes. Uh, one thing. Uh, you know, the URA is. I think it's seventy percent. Uranium minus and and thirty percent right. solar or something like that. But we have the URNM, which is the hundred percent pure play. So if you want to invest in uranium purely, that's the one you should go to. And as you can see, even though URA broke out of the of the golden trend line, the URNM is still let's mark that one is still below the gold the the squeeze here. So so what you want to look for uh, on this uh, ETF is the thirty six level to get above the thirty six. Uh, in my view, that would also be where UR, URA uh, breaks out above the 24. That's how I see it in this. Uh, so that will be the next confirmation, uh, basically. Yeah. And and the thing with so, URNM is it only goes back to 2020. So you yeah, don't have that longevity to really do any, uh, you know, same the same retracement that you've done with URA there. No, you cannot do that. But you can do other techniques like a FIP extension and so on. But 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 yeah, that that is true. You you don't you only have three years to go by. So yeah, so yeah. Well, and um, an even shorter time frame is URNJ. Yeah. Are you seeing anything there? That would tell. I mean, you, I mean, it's it's very sparse. But are you able to see yeah. anything from the limited amount of data that we have? Uh, it's very limited, as you as you mentioned. But uh, I think you also have have uh, seen this this formation before. A bit of a fake out to the downside, and now we're sitting on top of the golden trend line, which is that's very important to to be on top of this formation here. But again, I don't put that much into URNJ because it's only uh, two months or so. But still, as yeah. long as we can hold the golden trend line here, then it's, it's all bullish, uh, obviously. Uh, yeah. And again, we want we want to take out the the breakout high here here at around eighteen point five ish in that range. And and just FYI, guys, uh, for those who don't know, URNJ is the a junior miners ETF, yeah, for uranium. Yes, exactly. So it's uh, so both the URA, URA uh, URNM and URNJ looks very good at this point in time. But obviously, if if we get the if this is the fake out, then in in, in two weeks or four weeks time, it could look very bad. So just keep that in mind. But nope. for now, we we will take it. It looks good. Gotcha. Well, what about um candlesticks? Do you look at candlestick patterns, like whether uh, yes, or not it's a, the yeah. Yes, Whether yes, it's a do, hammer but, or, yeah, go ahead. Uh, excuse me, but that's more on the weekly, just a bit of a longer mm -hmm. term. Uh, but I do look at it, uh, and we can actually look at it today, because even though we were down, um, we closed at 0.6%, but if you look at, excuse me, if you look at the weekly candlestick or the daily candlestick here, that's actually quite nice because it shows you, again, that you have a lot of bias here above the 22 zone, and we mm -hmm. have a, a hammer candle here today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, So, yes, I do use it. But but mostly it is I mostly use uh, breakouts of bigger formations. That's my main go to. Um, so yeah. Gotcha. And and why is it important to um, look at the weeklies versus the dailies or the monthlies versus the weeklies? What does a longer time interval tell you versus a I short mean, that's, term? Yeah, shorter term uh, very often is very noisy. If you look at a one hourly, uh, I mean. Yes, you can you can see some some stuff in the early stages, but mostly it's just it's it's very hard to time and it's very volatile at that point. So the bigger the time frame you go to, the the more um, I will not say correct, but but when you have a breakout on a weekly or a monthly, 
that's usually a sign that the the bigger the crowd is is in on on this breakout compared to one hourly where you mostly have the traders uh, involved so uh the bigger the time frame the uh, the better uh, yeah. The, so, yeah. the better the better the signal to noise yeah. ratio probably is exactly exactly yeah so wow that's looking good that's, yeah, that's, it does. that's beautiful what is 24. that 24 yeah this is your yeah so 24 yeah. is is my my uh, level that i really want to get above within 24 to two. yeah 24 24 currently at 20, 22 right now yeah just a tad above yeah 22.4 22 was the was the breakout level at together with the golden trend line so so anything between 22 and 24 for now is just noise basically until we get a break up above or down so gotcha so, yeah. gotcha well uh, uh let's move it over to oil uh, what are let's you seeing in oil um we can go a bit of a shorter time frame here let's just zoom out just to see if we have have all the stuff involved here we will remove that one just to make it a bit more clean. So yeah, basically, let's go back here to 2008. Financial crisis uh, hit us all, you know, and then oil dropped big time. And here you can here you can see the the three spikes low. Uh, you have the one here, and then in 2016, and then obviously the March 2020 crash. Mm -hmm. So you have one, two, three, which is very often the reversal where you are getting, and then we can add this one over here. And what you basically see is, yes, we have the big breakdown, came, snapped right back up, broke out, and now we're just retesting. Let me just clean this one here, as you can see. So we are retesting, again, the golden trend line, which is coming all the way here. And you have one retest here as well, but you do a bigger retest now. So so as we are right now, we, we, are, we are basically just completing, or trying to complete a longer term retest uh, mm -hmm. of this level here. Um, I know many people have uh, have a target, you know, the, around uh, 55, um, which makes sense also. But but for now, as long as we are above, let's call it 60, then um, then it's all good for oil. And as you can see, if we go to the weekly, uh, excuse, excuse me, we are in a bull flag, you know, into the retest, which very often is very bullish if you have a retest that has a a bullish formation. So. But now, it has, it, yeah. Go no. Go ahead. I'm just going to say that still, even though we are testing here now, we have very big levels to complete or to to get back above before we can start to to build momentum to the upside. So. Uh, yeah, we've got a so, yeah. we've got a tough road ahead of us. So yeah. on the downside, if we break below that support level, what would be the next destination pit stop? I think it will be uh, roughly around the fifties. Uh, that's where you know uh, we started to really we really started to break down uh, early 2020 mm -hmm. when oil went to negative what was it 40 bucks or so so i think that's that's mm -hmm. a a magnet in itself um but for now you know the range high here is holding up so but if we break below 65 60 ish then i think we'll go down to 50 at least uh, in and the short term so 50 okay yeah, so 50 on the opposite side of things if we, uh, what's the resistance level that we're facing here? Um, is there a key resistance level that you see? Yes, I have I have three actually. But okay, but my, there it is. But my, when I turn really bullish on oil, is actually the eighty-two level here. But 82. right now, until we get to eighty-two, then we need to clear the seventy-five, which is this side right here. Okay, uh, so, you, so you've got seventy-five, eighty. Was 82. 83 and 82 and 93. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and then, uh, yeah. And then you've got another line above that or no? No, it is up here. I, I haven't drawn it in, but that's the, uh, the, uh, what's, yeah, the retrace high here after the, the, the war, right? We had the peak here and then the retrace high at around, uh, 100 and what is it, 20, 25. But gotcha. that's, but that's nothing that I'm looking at right now because we have so much stuff to do before we can even look at that number so i don't even think about it so uh do you look at do you look at the oil companies at all as well do you uh compare the oil companies with the oil price i i look at you know xop um but i'm not invested that much into it so i don't have mm -hmm. that much uh, skin in the game but i do look at it um and i have some drawings here as well um 
again, this is the uh, yeah the oil and gas explorers, and this is more long term, a ten year setup. Uh, I'll not go into that much much detail, but to me, this is a, a probably a inverted head and shoulders in the making for for these companies here, and um, and we have the blue neckline which will confirm it, but I think this one right here, what we're making right here, is the uh, the right shoulder. And if we zoom in on the daily, you can see, I'm just going to remove this risk reward. You can see here we have broken out and now we're trying to do some 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 back testing here in a flag. So hopefully we hold here and then and then we can grind higher. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's the one I'm looking at, but I, I only have like, uh, let's call it 2% or so invested into oil. So it's uh, in the future, it might be more, but for now it's not uh, that mm -hmm. much. So, so I noticed you have log scale. Yes. Uh, can you explain to the audience why you look at your charts in log scale? It's actually only until like three weeks ago, maybe roughly, that when I did the switch. Until then, I have been looking at the nominal scale uh, for the past, yeah, what is it, four or five years? And actually, I had an interview with Borak. I don't know if you know him on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, very, very good guy with, with regarding to technicals. And he has been using log scale for a very long time. And uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I, I talked to him a bit afterwards. And the way he explained it very shortly, it just made more sense to me to do the log scale. I don't think I can real why and so on, but it's it's, it's kind of simple. But but log scale just just makes sense. And also, yeah. ever since I have I have done the switch, I think the setup, you know, and the confirmation breakouts and so on is is more. Uh, it's more valid. It, it happens more often compared to, to the yeah. normal scale. It, it, so. it, it, it smooths out the noise, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. Exactly. For example, if you look at you, 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 you know that one, the energy fuels, and mm -hmm. go to the yep. to the uh, to the normal scale, you cannot use this chart basically for anything, right? So if you do the log scale, it will make more sense to you. You can do the charting yep. after that. So 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 that's why it's just yeah, long term it smooths this out everything and short term it doesn't. Yeah, much. It, I mean, it controls for a lot of volatility and yeah. makes makes it more interpretable. Hundred percent. Yes, it does. It does. So, so I like log scale now and use it ninety eight percent of my charting now. Log scale. Very good. Um, are there any other ratios that you look at when in regards to oil? Uh, no, not much to be honest. No. Briefly, I look at the XOP divided by oil, but that's just whenever I have some some spare time. Let's say I'm just uh, blasting through different charts and so on. But no, I don't too much what about natural gas oh yes you've been keeping up with that yeah i do i do uh, look at that one daily um actually a funny thing i actually i i caught this low here back in in, in 2020 and uh i mentioned that to a lot of my co-workers i said that nat, nat gas is going to be extremely extremely uh expensive in like a year or two and they was of course laughing at me, but at the end of the move, they were like, "Can I get in on this?" And then I said, "Of course, it's it's over." So, so net gas, yeah, I've been looking at that for a very long time. Well, and, I mean, they uh, called the top. It sounds like they called the top. Yeah, when, exactly. Whatever you're... They did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> close to the top, like twenty percent, but that's still yeah. quite a good indicator. So, so but still, so yeah, net gas. I think we'll have a. Uh, let me just zoom out on the bigger. Let's just remove these here, just to make it more visible so to me this is just uh i think we have some sort of an arc being made here long-term arc it's just a very quick draw here but i think you get the point mm -hmm. so i think i think we will have we will probably make a low here uh i don't know how long it takes but then i think we'll just grind higher actually uh in natural gas uh how it will get here i don't know but i think the way it's just rounding here I think we will just grind the uh, the arc here for natural gas. Interesting. Yeah, and this so, is the U.S. gas, the NYMEX. So, got it. So, so it looks like we've already hit um, the support level. We've started the initial process of bouncing off of it. Yeah. Right. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So I could just move it up a bit here. Uh, oh, actually, let's keep it there. So I just this is the formation that I have been looking at uh, for the past half a year or so. So it's trying to to make a bottom here in the short term, um, and I think if we can get some momentum, I just deleted that trend line, but I'll add it again here. I think we will have a quick scoop here up to like a three point three in that range, um, okay. in the short term. 
Okay, so so that's that's sort of like the short term bull case. What about the short? Ter- what about the the near term bear case? What what happens if we break below that arc? Is there a yeah. level you see? Yes, I think then we will have a have a visit. Actually, we have this okay. one here. This is the connection that you have. That's why I also called the low here. Uh, I think this is the low uh, and, mm. and and invested into that gas. I think then we can back get back to one point three, in that range, if we get a. Uh, a full-on collapse here, all the way down. So that would be a minus fifty percent or so, if we get that move. Got it. Can you can you go back to that arc view that you had? Yep, sure. Okay. So, uh, where do you see? You know, what's our base? What's sort of like your assessment of a best case scenario? Like, how high can this thing go? Do you think? Uh, I think we I think we can visit the highs here at the arc of uh, the top of the arc. And I think I can't remember the exact where it is, but there was a similar pattern many years ago where you also had three spikes very rapidly after mm-hmm. the, each other. Uh, and I think this could this could happen again. Um, so that's around 15 to $20? Again. Yes, in that range, yeah. If you get okay. a, a full-on move here. And that would also be, you know, the one, two, three, four, five move up. Uh, so the fifth leg will be somewhere in the 20s. Uh, it can easily happen. Gotcha. So... Uh, and if, go ahead. I'm, just, I'm just going to show you the European ones, the Dutch TTF natural gas. This is the log scale. You know, we can clearly see that nat gas again is gaining momentum. We have mm-hmm. broken out of this uh, of this wedge here. So, so I think we are making a bottom here for nat gas. Does, uh, then we will, yeah. Do the, the do the Euro, does the European price does that? I, I mean, I don't know the answer to this question, but does it does it lead the the American price because Europe is so sensitive to price movement of natural gas. I think it is actually, but I haven't done the study on it. But I would okay. uh, my my short answer without any proof. I think yes, it, it it does. It does. Yeah, that might be interesting to look at. Uh, you know, yeah. I might do it myself. It's just kind of like overlay the natural uh, the American natural gas price with the European gas price and see if the European if if the European gas price leads. Like if if it can have predictive power in terms of what the the American gas price will go. Yeah. That could be a fun one to do, actually. So cool. Uh coal. Are you keeping up with coal? Um a bit here. Uh I've started to look at it because to me it has become very interesting to to look for an entry. Mm -hmm. And uh basically I haven't been a, a part of coal at all. So I was just waiting for for my turn to get in. And I think uh, I think coal will will have a touch here on this upper trend line of this range. And when it does, that's when you want to to be going into uh, coal stocks and so on. The BTU, for example, will be a great entry uh, if you can get to this level here. So so yeah, but again, I haven't done much into coal at all. So uh, this sure. will be my first uh, investment into coal. So in, in terms of the energy stocks that we just covered, uranium, oil, nat gas, coal, um, which one which one are you the most bullish on now, given the technicals? Oh, definitely uranium, for sure. Definitely so uranium. Have, as long as we can hold these levels that we are right now, even though in the past two weeks we haven't done anything and people are getting bored again because, you know, two weeks for many people is just a long time. Oh, that's but, good news. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. But I think uranium... If we if this is not a fake out, then in the next eighteen months or so, we will have a big move, just like we saw two years ago, in the leg three up for E minus. That's my take on it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's shift our attention now to the metals. Uh, let's talk about gold. Yes, gold. Uh, what's going on with gold? We can. Uh, do we want to go short term or longer term? What's uh? What's uh it's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. We can start off whichever way you want. Yeah, we can just do a longer term, uh, ten year view or so. Um, again, in my view, this is one big cup and handle playing out here. We saw similar things back in, I think it was nineteen seventy eight, seventy seven or so. In that range, we also saw a a a, a retracement, and then we saw a two year uh, basing or consolidation before we broke out again. So I think this is what we're doing right now. So we're trying to make the handle here. Uh, if you look at the at the at the bear case first, let me just delete these here. Again, we have the first spike low here, the second spike low here. So if we were to get all three, the full correction, then we're actually looking at a move down to sixteen hundred dollars, more or less. Um, wow. 
but then again, that would be an absolutely gift from from the heavens if you can buy physical precious metals at these at, at these levels. I know the price you're getting in the store or in or in in your local coin shop, whatever, will not be sixteen hundred. It will be way higher, but still, that would be a gift. Yeah, um, it it really would be. But uh, but short term, we are still we broke down here from this bearish wedge coming up here, which started late or mid twenty twenty two. So we have broken out here, but, but we're still the, we're still holding the 1920 level, um, which is a big level because that's the weekly close. So this this I'm make, making it dotted for you guys. This is the weekly closes right here at around yeah 1920 1915. So this we, this one we, we really want to hold on a weekly level, um, and if we don't, then we will probably go down to uh, 1800 and and, uh, and and 50 because that's that is the measured move of this flag here. So, uh, so there are a lot of uh, bearish and bullish forces right now, just fighting to get the short term, long term uh, for gold. And, and and the gold miners haven't really responded, have they? No, no, they haven't. They haven't. Actually, they are down pretty heavily today. Even though we only went down, let's call it one percent, they are down three percent today. I think so. So they are taking a, a bigger hit. What What about medium and long term? Like, how how have the gold miners been acting in comparison to the gold metal itself? Yeah, we can have a look at uh, the GDXJ, which I think has, you know, actually some pretty good technicals. This right here is the uh, the COVID low or the March 2020 low. Mm -hmm. Big spike up, and ever since we have just been, yeah, grinding way longer than I than I would have thought actually was uh, was possible. But that's what you what you learn. And similar to gold, we were in this bearish wedge here mid 2022, and we are just breaking down today actually. So that's a a very bearish view. Uh, for the for the um, for the gold and silver miners uh, in the short term at least. Uh, the only upside is that ho hopefully the two hundred move uh, the two hundred daily moving moving average will will help will hold up. Um, but again, I don't I don't look at the two hundred or the or the moving averages that much at all. It's just to see if we are in an uptrend or downtrend. So that's how I take it. So uh, so yeah. So, so just to kind of make sure I understand this correctly. So you, you, you look at the moving averages just to identify where the wind is blowing generally, whether it's moving up or down. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I don't use it uh, more than that. Let's say. No, you don't um, use it as a support line or as, or anything like that. Not, not to buy or to sell from. No, mm -hmm. but I'm just, uh, I'm looking at it to see if, if the chart is respecting it as a support and resistance. Uh, and if it does, I have a, I will look at it in that way, but to me, it's just to see if the trend is up or down. Because typically, you know, the bigger players and institutions they often invest into things where the moving average, the 200 daily moving average, is going up. So if it if it is going up on a chart, you can you have a, a better uh, chance to 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 hit the the move or the breakout is is more valid because the bigger guys are involved typically. Gotcha. What about silver? What are you seeing on silver side? We could look at silver, taking a big hit today, actually, uh, three percent more or less. Um, we can go out, getting a bigger view again here. Um, again, a fifteen, roughly fifteen year long uh, pattern here. We have the the high here at around fifty, which is also the high back in nineteen eighty. Uh, let's zoom out. Actually, you can see here in the nineteen eighty. So again, this is one big. Cup and handle, but on a longer term time frame. Again, cup, and then a handle here that is being played out, mm -hmm. uh, similar to the gold, but again on a three to four x longer time frame. Uh, and my take is that when we break twenty six, in my view, that's where we are going to to go into the thirties, and then the all time high will be tested, and from there we will we will break out to uh, break out to higher highs. And the so reason is. It, no, I was just gonna say. So, for those who may not know, what's what is the significance of a cup and handle cup and handle pattern? It's the uh, within technical trading, actually, the cup and handle pattern can be used on any time frame: the five minute, the one hourly, monthly, mm -hmm. whatever. But it is one of the most bullish setups that you will that you can find, actually. So, if you can identify a cup and handle, which basically is, as mentioned, the cup you have here, mm -hmm. and then the handle on the cup. The handle can be a flag, or it could be another cup, but as a handle. Um, so when you identify these big setups here, um, um, that's often a sign that we are going 
we are going higher. Um, uh, when we break out above the 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 cup, uh, what's it called? Yeah, level here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you can you can do a different way of measuring how high we will go. But um, but uh, I don't know if we should look at that just yet. I'm just going to go into into the more uh, on the daily, which is a shorter time frame. And as mentioned, I think when we break above 26, that's when we break above the handle. Let me show you here on the weekly. This is the upper handle, and here you have the lower handle right here across somewhere in this in this range, depending on how you want to draw it. Um, so to me, 26 will confirm the handle, and then we will we will grind higher in some way. Um, I see. So uh, what level is that? 40, was that say 48? Yeah, yeah this is roughly last, the last high. Yeah. yeah, the last high. Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, so, what about the silver miners? What are you seeing on the silver miners? Similar to the GDXJ, uh, the gold miners, the silver miners just, again, is not doing very, very good at all. Um, we're still in a bearish territory. And uh, I actually had a, a view here going back uh, one and a half year, more or less, that this could be the an inverted head and shoulders coming across with the blue neckline. And right now, we're actually retracing down to the low of the right shoulder, which is um, which is a very important level to hold because as long as we are above the low uh, on the right shoulder, that's also a, then this setup is still valid. Um, and we can go to the daily here and we can clearly see that we are in this green downtrend coming here. We have this uh, green yep. downtrend here, yep. and uh, and this is a bullish setup as long as we are, in my view, uh, above this, uh, yeah, the right shoulder high. And I think we are completing a one, two, three, four, five correction here, and th and then we should be going higher at that point. But again, we have to wait and see what the chart is is doing um, before we can confirm anything. So yeah, silver miners and gold miners are very difficult to invest into. And uh, and maybe it should use more as a trading vehicle compared to a long term investment plan because mm. long term investors in, in in miners is just getting wrecked with dilution and and so on and volatility. So it's very difficult to to invest yeah. in these. Yeah. So if you look at the miners to um, metals ratio, yep. I, I think the miners are as cheap as they've ever been. Insanely cheap. No? I, I yeah. completely agree. I completely agree. Yeah. I just uh, that goes all the way back to two thousand seven uh yeah there you go yeah so this is the this is this is the uh the gdxj right and right here you had gold uh lower than we are right now at around what is it 1800 1900 something so you can clearly see that the underperformance in the miners has just been insane compared to gold right it's underperformed by 85 percent so just so, to get back yeah go ahead no i was just gonna say so how do you um I'm assuming you're invested in some capacity in the precious metals. True, true. How, how do you go about investing in the precious metals? Do you do you buy like the the ETFs to get around the dilution, or do you just buy the 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 precious metal it, itself? It's a combination of both, actually. I have the precious metals, which I think everyone should buy first if they want to get into this this sector, just to get your uh, your your what's it called, you know, your defense or your safety in order mm -hmm. first. And then you can go into to the more speculative investments like this, uh, like the gold and silver miners, where you can really, at some point, hopefully, you can really gain uh, a lot of wealth uh, in a short period of time. Uh, but regarding to the ETF or the miners, I'm roughly 50% in the ETFs, and then I have the last 50% uh, uh, into specific miners that I have been looking at and, and so on. So that's how I play it, plus the, the physical metal that I have. Gotcha. Let's uh let's let's look at copper next. Do you have copper up anywhere? Yes, I can uh, have it somewhere here. Copper there. Oh, there it is actually. So yeah. Now this these uh, lines are from when it was on lock uh, nominal scale, but let's do it like that. Okay. So yeah, copper, I think I have some investment in, into copper. Maybe again like 4 or 5% of my overall investment. Mm -hmm. And again, I think I think Copper will be hella, uh, really, really expensive over the next decade or two, uh, mainly because you know everyone is going green, electric cars, the electric power grid, and so on right. needs to be upgraded in many countries like the US, for example, but also in Denmark, where I live. Um, 
And again, the amount of copper that we have, let me put it in a different way. The, the mines that we have been mining for the past 100 years are somewhat easy to get to because they are very uh, close to the surface and so on. But the ones that we're discovering right now takes a lot higher prices to, to even start considering mining. Uh, plus the fact that the demand for copper for the next 10 years, in my view, will be very high. Um, so I think copper is a very good place to be. Um, but again, same as the silver miners and gold miners, the copper miners, again, are also very volatile and uh, very difficult to time correctly and so on. So if you have the stomach to to sit through big corrections and, and big upside as well, then it is something for you. But uh, but if not, then again, it's it, it's very tricky to, to invest into these into the miners for sure. I see. I see. Any other uh, non-commodity, non-resource stock-related uh, equities that you're looking at? Um, or are you purely focused on the resource investment side at the moment? Uh, at the moment, yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I really am. But there are, uh, I have been uh, invested, uh, you know, in the, in the leg up in, I know it's in crypto, but in Bitcoin, you know, uh, back in 2020, uh, into to more or less the highs, I sold out at 55k, and actually crypto again is looking looking quite nice right now. But that's a very different topic and different sector. But still, um, so I do invest into whatever I think is uh, has a potential. But right now, 95% uh, of my investments is into copper, gold, silver, uranium, platinum. It's a very good, very very good sector as well. I think we'll do insanely good in the next 10 years as well. Um, so yeah, mainly commodities. That's my my go-to. Gotcha. Energies, commodities. Yeah. So yeah. Gotcha. So so you mentioned Bitcoin there. Uh, do you have a Bitcoin chart to yes, look at? I do. Okay, yes, yeah. I let's do. let's look at that. We haven't looked at crypto on this channel yet. I think this would be um, interesting for some people to look at. So yes. what are you seeing here? What I'm seeing here is a. Let me just look at it here. This again to me was. Um, an invert head and shoulders. You have this should be blue because all my necklines are blue. Let me just do that like that. Let me zoom in here. Again, we have the invert head and shoulders coming here, uh, together with a breakout of a golden trend line here. So you have the breakout retest, and that's where you form the the right shoulder. You have the breakout, and right now we are sitting above. Let's go to the daily here, actually. So we are just like on. Uh, on one of the charts that we looked at at the early of the interview, I can't remember, but we broke out and we are in a flag right now mm -hmm. into the into the big retest of the blue neckline. And now we are breaking out. So this could be, uh, it looks like that this inverted hip shoulders with the target of roughly 41,000 is in the making right now here for Bitcoin. Um, Interesting. So 41,000, do you have a... Like, is there a time range that you're thinking that you're thinking of? Typically, Bitcoin goes through these halving cycles. Yes, they do. every four but years. And the last bull market we had was in 2021. So that would put us in 2025 for the next one. Or you might start to see the percolations of the next bull market begin in 2024 and peak in 2025. Yes. I mean, where we are right now could be somewhere in this vicinity, maybe, if if we were mm -hmm. to project that over. Um, but I think this is a, for now, this will just be a trade. I think there is, there is, uh, we need to get a bit, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, 25, maybe that's where you will see maybe the next bull market in Bitcoin, if we will get, if we will get that, of course, we don't know, but I think we have some, some time before. And also, as you mentioned, the halving, I don't know exactly where the halving is. Is, is it in 24 or some, some, somewhere, I think? It should be in 24. Yeah, so I think we need to get past that as well because every the past three bull markets has been after, I think I think six months after the halving or so, you get the bull market. So yeah, we have some some time to go still, but yeah. uh, but for now it's it, it's on the short term it looks very bullish and I think we could we could hit this uh, 21 uh, sorry, uh, 41 uh, thousand more or less if this plays out. Very good, very good. Uh, I see the SPX on your. Sidebar there. Have you been looking at that too? For the general yes. market? Yeah, but I think uh yeah, this is a bit skewed because I normally have them on no, oh, it's like this. I think we should we should do the Nasdaq instead, actually. Okay. Uh, um again, I think one tailwind to the uranium thesis is actually that if we get the overall markets to really 
start to break down, that will pull everything down, uh, no mm -hmm. matter how good the case is. And and I know many people are very bullish on, on the NASDAQ. Uh, just like we talked about, everyone is talking about the NASDAQ right now. I think we are close to, to uh, I'm, I will not call the top, but we are getting a retrace of some sort here in the in the near future. And 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 you can see here, this is the uh, the financial crisis low, and then we have the touches here coming all the way across. So if we break this golden trend line to the downside, I mean that will pull everything down. Uranium, uh, yeah, gold and silver miners, whatever at the beginning at least, um, and then we will head into a a bear market. Right. Uh, what well, what would be the next support line after that? I mean, then you have uh, obviously the the low here where we just bounced off of. So mm -hmm. if 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 we break, then that will be the low low that needs to hold. Um, uh, and if it do if it doesn't, then you should you could look at the COVID lows and so on, which is uh, a lot further down the scale. Um, but for now, this setup is actually short term very bullish. I'm just I just think that we will get some sort of a retracement here uh, down to some of the breakout levels. But uh, this structure right here, I mean, there's uh, it's very bullish. It it really is until proven otherwise. So uh, so yeah. Okay, looks good. So. You mentioned uranium as your most bullish energy play. Would you say uranium is your most bullish play in general as well? Yes, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fundamentals, the technicals, um, what we, you know, China is making, what is it, like 150 uh, nuclear power plants over the next 10 years or 15 years, whatever. Um, I mean, it's just it's just overall a very bullish case. And uh, and yeah, in, in, in the past bull market, you also had these 40, 50% move down uh, or retracements uh, or pullbacks, whatever you want to call it. And I think this is just the first one uh, of many. So if you can stomach it, you should, you should do very well in my view. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on the channel. I know it's late over there in Denmark. Um, is there anything, uh, how can people reach you? And is, and is there anything else you want to leave the audience with this before we sign off? No, I mean just uh, thank you for having me on. And again, if 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 your audience like what they see, and uh, they can follow me on Twitter at uslink inv. Same for YouTube, uslink inv, where I will post, uh, you know, roughly a video per day, more or less recaps, uh, but also looking into different sectors uh, with a more detailed view and long term view. So yeah, please follow me on on those uh, on Twitter and YouTube, and uh, and yeah, I think that's uh, that's it. Very good. Uh, where the, where does uslink come from, by the way? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, many people have asked, but it's it's very boring actually. It's not that uh, exotic. Not it's esoteric just, uh, and deep and symbolic. No, no, it's just uh, you know when I was young, I'm an old guy now. So, uh, but when I was young, I needed an an online nickname, and I'm still a very big Depeche Mode fan, which is an English band, and they have a song yep. called Depeche Mode. So I just took one of their CDs, looked on the cover on the backside. Ah, oh, use link. There it is. Boom. So it's just, <laughs> so it's just yeah, it's very simple, boring, but uh, yeah, it has stuck to me ever since. So, so yeah. Well, if you've been wondering like I was over the last, you know, several months that I've been watching your channel, um, anyone in the audience? Well, now you know. It's uh, it's from Depeche Mode. You got Depeche Depeche Mode, Mode yeah. to, you got Depeche Mode to thank for all the great technical analysis that uh, Casper brings out. So thank you. Very good. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to leave us a subscribe on the channel. Leave a comment if you um, if you have any if you agree or disagree with any of this analysis. Yeah, please. And finally, if you enjoyed this channel, enjoy the content, give us give us a like as well. So I will see you in the next video. Bye, y'all.